Looks like Miss Colors wants to start telling some truths out here. Don't take it personal, I ain't lying. Hey beauties, how y'all doing? I am Lissa and this is Life of Bliss. Welcome back. For those who are subscribed, thank you so much. And for those who are newly subscribed, welcome and thank you so much. If you are seeing my face, this face here for the first time, go ahead, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be updated for more videos to come, okay? Cool. Looks like Miss Colors wants to start telling some truths out here. BLM co-founder Patrice Colors admits she lied when she denied using Group 6 million LA property only for official business, reveals she hosted parties for Biden's inauguration and her son's birthday. All right. That doesn't really tell us where the rest of the funds are, but I guess this is a start. She must be feeling the heat. <laughs> I, I mean, she must be feeling the heat, so she's like, let me give them an inch. Let me, let me give them a little bit. BLM's controversial co-founder Patrice Cullors has admitted she lied when she said she had only ever used the group's $6 million LA, $6 million LA mansion for official business. Cullors, 38, told the Associated Press Monday that she used the opulent seven-bed Studio City compound purchased in cash by BLM in October 2020 for her own recreation twice. Okay. The first instance saw her hold a party to toast Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's inauguration as president and vice president in January 2021. Then in March, the same year, she commandeered the luxury property whose purchase was sparked, whose purchase has sparked fury among other racial justice campaigners for her school-aged son's birthday party. Color said of her earlier decision to lie, I look back at that and think that probably wasn't the best idea. Hmm. She previously issued a statement denying that she'd ever lived there or used the property for her personal gain after it per after its purchase was revealed by New York Magazine triggering allegations of racism from BLM. All right, so this right here is a picture of the home. We're looking at the pool and we're looking at a picture of her and her son. They said her son was school age. This man looks grown. But I don't mean you know. <laughs> now what I find interesting is right after everything is is like I said in the last video, which I appreciate all that watched that, is she feeling the heat, she feeling the pressure, and immediately after Candace Owens made it plain and clear that she is searching for the truth and that is what this documentary is going to disclose. Now Patrice Colors is coming out slowly giving us a little bit of the truth now i hope we find out exactly where the rest of these funds went what's going on why so i guess you got to take your little you got to dip your little toe in, in, in the water of truth before you totally dive in <laughs> Black Lives Matter raised 90 million in the wake of George Floyd's murder and still has an impressive 60 million of cash on hand. Explaining the reasoning behind the luxurious purchase, Colors told Associated Press, we look at commercial buildings, we looked at commercial buildings and we looked at homes and then we found this really amazing space that's a sweet spot between commercial and residential. She went on to justify its purchase by highlighting how the mansion had a soundstage which enabled BLM to produce podcasts. Podcasts? They have podcasts? After receiving the email asking the comment on the house's existence last month, BLM officials reportedly circulated an internal memo with possible responses to the outlet's query concerning the alleged purchase. The responses range from, can we kill the story, to our angle needs to be to deflate ownership of the property, the magazine reported. Hmm. Trying to hide, trying to hide, conceal. Hmm. At the time, Colors, who attested the property, was bought as a safe space for black creatives, activists, and thought leaders, and that its purchase was never disclosed because it needed renovating. Angrily hit back at her detractors, describing criticism she was facing since the purchase was made public as racist and sexist. Colors, mean, meanwhile, defended the purchase while speaking to the the AP last week arguing that the opulent home was was bought to bring further value to the BLM empire. How? We really wanted to make sure that the Global Network Foundation had an asset that wasn't just financial resources, she said, and we understood that not many black-led organizations have property. They don't own their own. 
they don't own their property this is so weird to me it's so corrupt and weird and like backhanded the way that um <laughs> they're trying to justify this six million dollar purchase it's not justifiable um especially when there's like no no other programs or anything that's giving back to the black community to actually help them or what i do appreciate right now that a lot of people are speaking up about it a lot of people are seeing what's going on and a lot of people ain't ain't dealing with it especially a lot of black people like girl you can't keep spouting lies and expecting people to just be at your side and the ones that are at your side are ignorant that's that's how i see it i hope that more of the truth continues to come out <laughs> i said what i need to say and at least we get her admit it, admitting to this lie we'll see i don't i a part of me really doesn't think that it's just her um i know that she is the one we are talking about in the media a lot but in order to figure out where the rest of these funds went i think that it also is a little bit bigger than her or it is just more it contains more people than just her taking all of these actions with all these missing funds so we'll see child thank you so much for listening i really appreciate it i love you love yourself love others always bye beauties don't take it personal